the Easy Gourmet is sponsored by the Scoreboard Sports Bar and Grill. Come visit us at 15 Middlesex Canal Park in Woburn, 781-897-4000. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Easy Gourmet. I'm your chef and host Vinny Felici. Uh, we have an exciting show for all of you today. Today we're going to be doing uh, steamed mussels uh, with a nice uh, a white sauce and a butter sauce. Uh, we're going to be doing a so pan roasted salmon and uh, that has, sits on a bed of uh, sautéed spinach. And for dessert we're going to be doing poached pears. So why don't we get at it right away. As we normally do we want to get our pan heated. So let's get our pan nice and hot, medium high. In the meantime, I have already washed the mussels. These are Prince Edward, Isle, uh, Prince Edward Island mussels. And just, I already washed them. Always wash them before you uh, steam them or cook them. That way uh, they'll remain alive. You see a few that look like they're a little open. Tap them just to check and they'll, they'll close to let you know that, that they're still alive. If um, after cooking, if they don't open, that's when those are the ones that you don't want to eat. So what we want to do first is we want to get an onion. An onion, a couple of scallions. Remove the skin. Get rid of the ends. And it's just a rough chop. You don't we're not gonna do anything fine for this particular recipe. So roughly chop that. Put that to the side, couple of scallions. We're gonna use the whole thing. Remove the roots. You can slice those on an angle just to give it a little effect while it's in the pan. To, like I said, we wanna use the whole thing. Nothing wasted here. Come over to our pan. Let's check it to see if it's hot. Just a little more, blast that a little more. What about a tablespoon or two of butter? Unsalted butter, as I've said many times, unsalted butter is great because that way you can add the salt to your recipes and adjust them the way you want. A little bit of oil. About a tablespoon or two. We have a two pounds of mussels today. I guess if you were gonna go three or four pounds, you might wanna go a little bit more butter and a little bit more oil. So we get about a tablespoon, two tablespoons, approximately. It's nothing wrong with eyeballing anything. As you know on the show, we kind of eyeball a lot of things. We don't have to measure. Throw the onions and the scallions in. And get those going. Just slightly, about a minute or two, just to soften them up just a little bit. Even a minute's fine. Because they're going to soften, uh, we're going to be cooking with the cover on. And the steam will soften these, but just to kind of get a little bit of that flavor in there. Also, we want to put in a clove of garlic. One clove is enough. You can roughly chop that also. Sprinkle that around. And once you get that all coated with your oil and your butter, you can add your mussels. Ooh, that's a little bit of the wash water. Just toss the mussels in. And for a little color, I forgot about this, you can just add a little bit of tomato, just for a little color to break up some of that green and black. And stir that around. It's a very easy recipe. You can serve this as an appetizer or, or as a meal. 
Now you want to give it about a, a half to a third of a cup of, um, of vermouth or white wine, whatever you have handy. But make sure it's white. You don't want it red in this recipe. It's about a half a cup. Leave that on medium high to high and then cover it. In an 8 to 10 minutes the mussels will be ready. Uh, for our pan roasted salmon, we're going to have a combination of brown sugar, light or brown, it doesn't make any difference, ground cinnamon, and ground cumin. So what we want is a couple of tables. We're going to be using two 6 ounce fillets of salmon. So you want, you know, you want enough to coat both of them. You're only going to be coating one side. So we want uh, a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. I figure a tablespoon each per uh, piece of salmon. Um, half a teaspoon of ground cumin. This is one of those rare, rare occasions where I measure because we don't want to make, we don't need too much of this because we can always make it up at will. If we were to have salmon again another time, we want to make it up fresh. We don't want it to sit around. So we another half teaspoon of cinnamon. We're going to need a little bit, bit of uh, kosher salt, a little bit of black pepper. Probably uh, half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And we just want to mix that up, kind of incorporate it all into itself. And the salmon fillets I already have ready, they're washed, they're dry. And we want to place, these are about six ounces a piece, one portion. So we want to place uh, this on the non-skin side. And we want to maybe let it marinate for about five to ten minutes. Kind of penetrate the flesh somewhat. And that's all you have to do. So we pat those on. Now we want to get our pan nice and hot. Well, before we do that, though, we want to set our oven to 350. And make sure that you can either use a nonstick pan or a pan that isn't nonstick, but make sure you use a pan that has a metal handle that can take heat. So we want to get our pan nice and hot, as we normally do. Why don't I move this to the back burner, just so we can, you guys can see a little better. Get the pan nice and hot. Press that in just a little more. And we wait till the, we have to wait till the pan is warm. So why don't we just take a wait a moment? The Easy Gourmet is sponsored by the Scoreboard Sports Bar and Grill. Come visit us at 15 Middlesex Canal Park in Woburn, 781-897-4000. Okay, we have our salmon nice and coated. We just want to put about a tablespoon of oil just to get the bottom coated. Because so we don't want to over, overwhelm the fish. You can use vegetable oil or olive oil. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you like. And just coat the bottom. And then put the fish in. Skin, uh, <laughs> skin side down. No, put the fish uh, coated side down the side that we coated. And you can leave the skin on because after this recipe it cooks quite a bit and the skin you can actually eat. Some of it falls off, don't worry about it. So we want about, depending on how thick the fish is, this is about an inch or so, you probably want to go two minutes. Straighten those out just a little. If you, 
you wanted to for this particular recipe you could make up a little uh, bechamel sauce which is a uh, sauce that has some cream and some butter and uh, some salt and pepper and a little bit of spice just to go with it but I think the coating on this is enough that the fish will have a flavor all the way through and you don't really need anything on the side besides maybe just a little slice of lemon so you want those to go about two minutes let's turn this over so okay so we're ready to turn these been a couple of minutes. Turn them over to the skin side. And what we want to do is put this into the 350 degree heated oven for about six minutes. Pan and all. And I think our mussels may be ready. Oh yeah, look at that. So the mussels have been going for about uh, 8 to 10 minutes and looks like all of them have opened. That's what you want to check for before you serve them. So you want to let them rest. Take them off the heat and let them rest for about 2 minutes then they'll be ready to serve. Alright, so all the uh, salmon's in the oven. Why don't we... Uh, see how our mussels are. We let them rest for a couple of minutes and they look really good. Really, really good. Why don't we heat up another pan to have our little spinach side. Hold on one second. This pan is hot so I want to just be careful. All that juice is all the uh, the liquor is, as they call it, from the mussels. What I like to do is serve it with a little bread on the side, and I like to put a little kosher salt on, just to kind of balance off the brininess. Not a lot, just a little bit to kind of. So, what, so we take them out of the pan, just put a little bit of salt on to counterbalance that brininess from the, uh, the shell itself and it, 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 it just kind of neutralizes it somewhat. So why don't we just, uh, normally I taste at the end of the show, but, but this just smells so awesome, I'm going to taste, taste it now, see how it is. Wow, the butteriness, the, uh, the butter, and that little brininess from the, uh, the mussels is just really awesome. And the juice, a lot of this juice at the bottom is not the oil and the butter, but it's the liquor or the nectar that's released from the, uh, the, the uh, mussel after it, after it opens. Wow, that is awesome. That is awesome. Um, so right now we have a couple of minutes left for our salmon in the oven. So I have a hot pan going. So we just want a little bit of oil. Don't boil your spinach. You're going to lose all the flavor and all the texture. Just a little bit of oil. Toss your spinach in or any other, anything else you might want to use. Asparagus is great with this recipe. And just kind of, just kind of. All you want to do is heat that up, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And you toss that around a little bit. And the salmon's going to sit on top of this and really, 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 really make a nice presentation. So you just want to leave a little bit of crunch to it. We'll leave that on low while the salmon continues to cook. I think we're about at five minutes. So we'll leave that on low. And uh, we'll wait for the salmon. All right, it's been about six minutes. Let's check our fish. But like I say, I think that's all you need. And be careful when you remove your pan because 
that pan, that handle's been in the oven. So when I lay out a towel over here, we can plate that up. Just move this a little forward. Got a little bit of spinach. And you can flavor this as much as you want. You want a little bit of salt or anything like that? You can do that. Or a little bit of extra pepper. That should remove nicely. Leave the skin on. Like I say, the skin is delicious. And there you have it. Pan roasted salmon on a bed of spinach. Well, we just give that a little a little lemon to kind of dress that up a little bit. And there you go. Okay, we'll put this off to the side for a moment. And we'll get to our third item of the day. What we're going to do, just for a little a little uh, take, my take on a recipe that I've done for a long time that's very light and very nice, especially when pears are in season. Lemon poached pears. So what we need is pears. And normally it's one per person, so I'm just going to do two today. And we need ourselves a saucepan. A pan big enough to uh, to fit as many pears as you need. This pan like this, this is about a three-quart pan. It would take maybe four pears. You probably could squeeze five into it. So what we need is, uh, we need two cups of water. You're saying, why is he measuring? Well, once in a while I do measure. Two cups of water. Um, we need about a half a cup of sugar. A little bit of vanilla. I make homemade vanilla. I just buy the uh, couple of vanilla beans, put them into a container, and fill this up with brandy. You don't have to get expensive brandy. This is, I think this was uh, one of the lower end brandies, but the thing is after about uh, three or four weeks, let it sit in the counter. You have uh, really nice vanilla, better than I think you can buy in the store. A little bit of vanilla. A couple of slices of lemon. A little bit of lemon juice. Whatever's left in the lemon that you use. And kind of get the sugar uh, incorporated with the water a little bit before you add the pears. And you want to peel the pears. I tried it with the skin on, it isn't as good. So you just want to peel those. With the potato peeler, if you're good with a paring knife, you could use a paring knife. Just get all the skin off. Leave the stem on. It makes a nice presentation. Just cut the bottom a little bit so it stands up in the pan. Just take about a quarter of an inch off. Oops. Any kind of pear will do. These uh, Andrew pears are nice, Bartlett pears. You know, I, I wanted to buy for this recipe today red pears, but I didn't see any at the market. But Red, uh, to me, that's one of my favorite pears. They're a little more earthy tasting, 
in a little a little more dense than, than Bartlett and Andrew Pears, and I, I really like them. They're hard to find, though. I know you're going to peel them, and you won't see the red, but the, the flesh the, it's, itself is a, it has a little more, like as I say, earthy and dense flavor. I just peel that. And you want to put this on the stove, about medium heat, for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes basting basting ever so a couple of times on those 20 oops what am I doing baste those uh, with the sugar syrup every five or ten minutes the total time cook time is about 10 minutes t 20 minutes sorry and through the magic of television we happen to have some made I don't know if you can see those floating in there So you don't even need tongs with these, you can just take them out by the stem. You can serve them in your favorite dessert dish. Let's take a little bit of, make them a little flatter so they stand up. Oh yeah, look at that, huh? And take a little bit of the syrup. And you can dress this up the way you want. I like to put a little bit of chopped almonds on top, but you could use you could use chopped uh, pistachios. Oh, you don't have to use nuts at all, just to give it a little garnish around. And you could take a little bit of chocolate. And you can just shave it on top. You could use curls if you wanted to do curls. You could do that if you want to. Just anything to kind of dress it up. If you wanted to give it some color, you could put a mint leaf in there. If you had mint leaves or any kind of leaf, just to give it a little color. And there's your lemon poached pears for dessert. So to recap today, we had uh, steamed mussels, which had uh, sautéed onion, sautéed scallion, I threw a tomato in just for color, but you don't necessarily need it. You saute a little bit of oil and butter. Uh, just get, get those going in the uh, oil. And then you add the washed mussels, a little bit of a blast of white wine or uh, white vermouth. Cover them for 10 minutes, let them rest for two minutes, and then you'll have a delicious either appetizer or main meal. Our second uh, recipe today, was, look how golden brown that is. It's just really, really nice. It's our, um, I have to refer back to my notes again. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Pan roasted salmon with a uh, rub of brown sugar, kosher salt, black pepper, cumin, and cinnamon. And we just made up a little batch of that kind of a dry rub, patted it on the non-skin side, sauteed that at high heat for two minutes, flipped it over, and then toss that into a 300, preheated 350 degree oven for about six minutes. And uh, if the piece of fish is really thick, more than an inch, I'd say maybe go seven to eight minutes. This was about an inch and six minutes is just right. And we put that on top of a sauteed bed of spinach. And of course, our lemon poached pear. Very easy, two cups of water, half a cup of sugar, that's pretty much the recipe for four pears. We only did two today. Then you can put that on the stove at medium heat, get it going to a little bit of a boil, then baste them every five or 10 minutes for a total of 20 minutes. That's all you need. Use a ripe pear. Don't use one that's really, really hardened or you'd have to go maybe a half hour for the juice and the sugar to kind of soften the pear. But if they're medium ripened, they'll probably be finished in about 15 to 20 minutes. Then you finish it off the way you'd like. Uh, chopped almonds or pistachios, we used almonds today. A Little bit of shaved chocolate. I think it makes a nice presentation of dessert. So anyway, that's, I guess that's today's show. Uh, again, if you have any questions and you want to ask myself the Easy Gourmet any questions or you have some suggestions, it's WPMC Easy Gourmet at gmail.com. 
any suggestions, any, anything you'd like us to maybe try or you have any questions about anything that we do on the show, anything is welcome. And of course, I cannot forget my friends at the scoreboard, Wilbur. They make this show possible. And again, thank you guys. Thank you, Frank, everybody down at the scoreboard. So again, thank you for being in my kitchen today. And uh, as I always say, and I like to wrap up each show, happy cooking. The Easy Gourmet is sponsored by The Scoreboard Sports Bar and Grill. Come visit us at 15 Middlesex Canal Park in Woburn, 781-897-4000.